Well, good morning and welcome to this uh, nanophoton uh, lecture. My name is Jesper Mörk and it's my pleasure to introduce today's uh, distinguished speaker, Dr. Masaya Notomi. Dr. Notomi is with NTT Basic Research Labs in Japan, as well as being a professor at the Department of Physics, Tokyo Institute of Technology. I think it's fair to say that Dr. Notomi is probably the internationally leading researcher within the area of active nanophotonic structures. He and his group have pioneered a number of new and ingenious devices that exploit the fascinating physics of the photonic crystals. So that includes uh, novel and record-breaking microlasers, ultra-low power optical switches, bistable elements, optical memories, and, and many more. I think we have many people who look towards the, the, the research you are doing and, and just trying to, to follow it. And for these achievements, of course, uh, Dr. Notomi has been awarded numerous uh, prestigious prizes. The title of his talk today is From Photonic Crystals to Topological Photonics. Before we start, I would just ask you all to mute your microphones. Uh, the lecture will be recorded. And if you do not wish to, to, for your face to be seen for some reason, please turn, turn off your camera. With that, uh, I think we are ready to, to start. So please, uh, Masaya, we look forward to your talk. Okay, uh, thank you for your kind introduction. So the, uh, today's my title of, uh, title of my talk is From Photonic Crystal to Topological uh, Nanophotonics. And uh, actually, I'm going to talk about uh, two topics. The first one is uh, mostly debated for the application side of nanophotonics. And uh, actually, I ha we have been working on photonic crystals for a long time. And uh, we have been working on the device side for a long time. But recently, we are more keen about the uh, opt, uh, OE conversion or EU conversion devices because they are very important for making uh, photonic integral circuits. So I'm going to talk about this topic. And then uh, the photonic. Uh, we in some uh, occasions we need something other, uh, something uh, other than photonic crystals. So I'm going to introduce one example. Uh, that is, we introduce a, uh, some new material, uh, graphene and the plasmonics for boosting up the performance. So this is uh, the first part, and the second part is mostly about more fundamental science. Uh, it is about topological uh, and no harm mission uh, nanophotonics. And for us, uh, these, these areas are uh, natural extension of photonic crystals. So the, and the, we are now uh, doing, uh, doing uh, research in, in uh, three directions. So I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this, this and this and this, this these three topics. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, begin with the uh, photonic crystals. And I think uh, most of this audience uh, have already uh, know about, knew about photonic crystals. Uh, but the definition of photonic crystal is very simple. It is a periodically uh, modulated, uh, period, period, uh, refractive index is periodically modulated. And that's uh, this artificial structures. And as a result of that, uh, we can achieve a very exotic dispersion, including photonic band gap. And uh, uh, this area is actually the uh, optical analog of solid state band theory. And actually my field in university is solid state physics. So the, for me, it is natural to uh, go into this uh, photonic crystal field when it started. And uh, we have been working on this photonic crystals for almost 20 years. And we have, uh, we have uh, achieved uh, various uh, non-photonic devices. And uh, uh, I'm going to show just one example, typical example of photonic crystal devices. It's a very our old result uh, 10 years ago. And at that time, uh, we have achieved uh, uh, all optical switching uh, based on photonic crystal nanocavities here. So because of the strong light confinement, uh, we have achieved all optical switching action with a very small uh, driving energies. So in this case, uh, uh, energy consumption is less than uh, femtojoule. And if we compare 
the, this performance of our uh, photonic crystal switch with other types of uh, conventional photonic switching devices is uh, shown here. So it is, this is a comparison uh, with the uh, uh, switching energy per bit and the switching time. And as you might have, uh, as you might notice, so for the conventional device, uh, there is uh, some trade-off uh, between switching time and switching energy. However, uh, this photonic crystal device is, is uh, improved in terms of this trade-off. Trade-off is the energy and time product. And the reason is very simple. Uh, here, the, we can uh, succeed, in, uh, we, we can uh, reduce the device size uh, without uh, losing the uh, light confinement. So that is a key, a key factor for reducing, uh, for achieving, uh, for, I'm sorry, for breaking this trade-off. And we, we have applied uh, this method for various devices. Uh, this is all optical switching devices, and this is a, a nano lasers, and this is optical memories, and this is optical LAN. And all of these devices, uh, we can achieve the uh, large energy uh, reduction uh, as a result of a strong light confinement. But as I said, so recently we, we are uh, interested in uh, OE and EO conversion. And because uh, it, it is very important to improve the efficiency of OE and EO conversion. Uh, as written here, the energy per bit for OE conversion is a few, uh, hundred, a few hundred frame per joule per bit. And for EO conversion, they tend to 100 frame per joule per, per, joule per bit. And these numbers are not so small if we uh, seriously think about the uh, int uh, application for the photonic integrated circuit. So this can be a serious bottleneck because as I told you that we can reduce the energy consumption for the, uh, the uh, optical devices. But uh, uh, somehow we have to connect the photonic integrated circuits for the electric circuit. So the, this means that the, this OE and EO conversion could be a bottleneck. And this bottleneck is uh, primarily due to the capacitance. That is when we have, uh, we realized uh, this for uh, some years ago. And this is a comparison of capacitance for the various devices. And as you know, the capacitance of electric device is very, very small, uh, less than film to fart. However, the conventional uh, OE and EO conversion devices, the capacitance is a uh, little bit larger than the uh, this, uh, electric devices. And actually so this capacitance limit uh, this OE and EO conversion uh, efficiency. And we have achieved the very small capacitance uh, for the OE and EO conversion devices by using photonic crystals. So this is our, uh, the situation of our device. And let me introduce the, the OE converter, uh, namely the photonic crystal photo detector. So this is the structures uh, of the phot uh, photonic crystal uh, photo detector. And because of the strong light confinement, uh, the, the size is small. So this means that the capacitance is also small. And uh, in this particular case, the capacitance is smaller than a film to fart, which is very small value. And normally, if we reduce the capacitance, we reduce the performance because that, that happens for the uh, uh, reducing the light confinement. However, in this case, we can achieve very high performance even for this very small capacitance value. Uh, this is a typical uh, performance of our photonic crystal photo, uh, photo detectors. Uh, one ampere per watt for the responsivity and dark current is smaller than 100 picoamps and uh, uh, we can achieve high speed operation about uh, 40 gigabit per second. So these numbers are almost comparable to the uh, cutting edge uh, photo, uh, photo detector that is used for the uh, optical fiber communications. And uh, more importantly, uh, for these particular devices, we can achieve light to voltage conversion without uh, trans impedance amplifier. 
Actually, the, this energy consumption of this OE conversion is dominated by the, this electric amplifier. So we want to remove this. And uh, if we, uh, if the capacitance is uh, capacitance of photodetector is small, then we can remove small, uh, the electric amplifier, and we can uh, achieve the uh, light voltage conversion uh, with just simple uh, high load resistance. So the, uh, we have achieved this uh, monolith monolithic integration of uh, this high load resistance with photo, uh, photo detector and the resultant uh, light voltage conversion efficiency is four kilovolt per watt. And actually this efficiency is much better than the photo detector with uh, TIA uh, trans impedance amplifier. And in addition, uh, there's uh, another bonus for the, by using this system. Uh, because we can uh, we we remove the trans impedance impedance amplifier, and the uh, total uh, impedance is higher, so that means that the, uh, we can expect low summer noise. So this is another bonus. And later we found out that the, uh, we uh, there is, is another uh, advantage. Actually, for, for this photonic crystal photo, uh, photonic crystal photo detector. The, that can uh, operate uh, at very high speed, 20 gigabit per second, at the uh, uh, <coughs> without bias voltage uh, for the uh, without uh, uh, negative uh, negative bias voltage. And what does this mean? So this means that the, if we apply the uh, load resistance. So that receiver uh, can be operated uh, as if they are uh, solar cell. Solar cell doesn't require any bias voltage. So, but uh, normally solar cell is slow, but uh, this particular device can operate, can, uh, can be operated at a very high speed because of the strong light confinement. And uh, uh, if we combine this property, the ultimate OE converter uh, it should be uh, something like this, uh, just a photo detector with uh, this load resistance. So the uh, so this means that this very tiny uh, component uh, can can function as a, a very efficient OE conversion. Actually, this con this uh, OE converter doesn't require electric uh, energy anymore, and also the uh, the noise is small. So this is uh, the performance expected for the OE converter. And let me uh, uh, show the EO converter uh, by the photonic crystal uh, EO modulators. And the uh, uh, energy, uh, energy consumption of EO modulator is mostly determined by the capacitance because the energy is dominated by the charging energy for the EO modulator. And uh, this is a SCM picture of our fabricated EO modulator based on photonic crystal. And again, the capacitance is very small, it's less than one frame of the part. And it can be operated very far, fast speed. And as a result of the strong light confinement and uh, this small capacitance, the charging energy is very, very small. It is 40 attitude per bit. And, uh, uh, and uh, there's some very small uh, photocurrent energy. So as a total, the energy consumption for this AO modulator is 42 attitude per bit. And this value is much, small, much, much smaller than the conventional EO modulators. And as, uh, as far as we know, this is a record low data for any EO modulators, the 42 attitude per bit. So this, so this uh, clearly shows that the, if we can succeed in reducing the capacitance, then we can reduce the energy, uh, energy uh, efficiency for the EO conversion. So the, uh, if we, so now we have very efficient EO converter and OE converter. So what we can do? So this is one example what we, what, uh, we can do for by combining these two uh, devices. So here is a, here is a uh, amplifier free and photo detector. And here we have the attitude energy, the EO modulators. So these two devices are connected by the, this load resistance. 
So the, the whole this uh, total monolithic device uh, can be operated as a three terminal uh, optical devices. So this means that uh, if we input the optical signal into photo, photo detector, so this generates photo current, and this photo current is converted to the voltage by using this uh, load resistor, and, and uh, this voltage drive this EO modulator. So the, as a result of that, we can modulate the, this uh, light transmitters. So this is the one, two, three input uh, optical devices. So the, uh, the important point is the energy consumption of these three terminal devices is very small. It is uh, about uh, one, uh, one or two femtojoule per bit. And the, uh, from the experiment, we can uh, determine, we could determine the total capacitance of these devices. So this is experimentally uh, confirmed value of this uh, particular devices, the two femtofarad. As far as we know, the, this uh, is the first demonstration of femtofarad integration in for the uh, optoelectronic devices. And more importantly, uh, this uh, device can uh, generate the signal gain. So, the, so this is, is a kind of optical transistors. And uh, such devices uh, can play an important role for some photonic integrated circuits, as I will show you later. So the uh, uh, as a, as a, uh, so this is the same uh, comparison of optical switching devices, and as I said, uh, we can achieve the uh, big improvement uh, from the conventional devices. But to be honest, the photonic crystal uh, there's some limitation for using photonic crystal. Actually, the, we cannot achieve uh, this area by simply using photonic crystal because so this is limited by the uh, photon lifetime and also, also the carrier lifetime of this uh, particular devices. So uh, we looked for the other material and the other platform. And for concerning the material, uh, we were interested in graphene because graphene is a very efficient optical nonlinear material. And as you know, the graphene is a uh, very good absorber. The so one layer graphene can absorb 2.3%. And actually this number is quite big if we convert to the conventional absorption coefficient. So the uh, graphene is a very good absorber. And the simultaneous is uh, uh, this uh, absorber can, call, uh, can be uh, saturated. I mean, the, it can be uh, used as a saturable absorber, but conventional uh, semi semiconductor, the such, uh, saturable, absor uh, saturable absorption is a quite slow process because the, this, this process is limited by the carrier lifetime. However, in the case of the, uh, how the, uh, in the case of uh, graphene, Graphene is a, there's no band gap. That's why the, this recovery process is very, very fast. So that this means that the graphene is a ultra fast and energy efficient. Energy efficient means a, a good absorber and also broadband. So this is a promising nonlinear optical material. But the graphene is very, very thin. So that is a problematic for the uh, conventional uh, photonic devices. Uh, for example, if we uh, load the, uh, the single layer graphene on a silicon wire waveguide, then the uh, interaction between the graphene and the light mode is not so big. So that's why the, uh, the, this device uh, cannot be so short and the energy consumption uh, is not so small. So the, we, uh, we decided to use plasmonic waveguide. So this is our uh, structures. The, uh, here is a, a MIM, a metal insulator metal plasmonic waveguide. And we load the single layer graphene on the top of that. And because the light is strongly confined in the it's MIM waveguide, so that improve or, uh, in, uh, improves the uh, light matter interaction with graphene and the light mode. And uh, uh, as a result of simulation, uh, we confirmed that uh, if we uh, use this platform for graphene, 
then device size size uh, could be reduced by one or two order magnitude. And the graphene absorbance is improved 10 or 30 times in comparison to the silicon photonics. And the field intensity, this is the most important uh, quantity, is the field intensity in, at the graphene is 300 times improved. So uh, we, we decided to fabricate these structures is a, a, this is a graphene loaded the deep sub wavelengths uh, wavelength, MIM wavelength. The size of this MIM wavelength is very, very small. It's a 20 nanometer times 30 nanometers. It's very, very small. And the uh, most, most important component is this uh, mode converter. Uh, because uh, uh, without mode converter, it is not uh, it is not easy to couple the light from the outside, but uh, if we use the plasmonic waveguide for the all through the circuit, then the uh, the propagation loss of the uh, plasmonic waveguide become uh, will be problematic. So the uh, we need a good uh, mode converters, and actually there are many uh, several types of the plasmonic wave uh, mode converters. Uh, studied before, uh, but most of the, this converter are, 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 are designed for the relatively large plasmonic devices. Uh, for example, the this uh, height of this uh, uh, waveguide it's not so small for the conventional uh, mode converter, but uh, we designed the this special uh, mode converter for a very thin MIM waveguide. So the, uh, you can notice that the, this core size is very, very small in comparison to the previous model converters. So the, uh, the, uh, still we can achieve the very good uh, coupling loss. It's less than two decibel uh, for the each time, uh, each uh, conversion. So the, uh, uh, this is an experimental result for the, this uh, old optical uh, nonlinear devices. So here is the input, and this is output, and the graphene is loaded here. And uh, this is experimental result for the uh, optical nonlinearity. Uh, it's a saturable absorption. So that if we increase the input power, the output power is increased. So this is a, a typical uh, saturable absorption. And you can notice that uh, this uh, saturable absorption is in increased if we, the, uh, the uh, slot size becomes small. So the, this directly shows that the reduction of the core size is very, very important. And also the, uh, this particular device does not show the uh, wavelength dependence. So this is show that the, this device is inherently broadband. So the, this is uh, the uh, final result for the, this particular devices. So we have succeeded in uh, achieving the all optical switching demonstration, uh, all optical switching operations by using the uh, femtosecond uh, pulses. And the important point is the uh, required pulse energy is very, very small as a 35 femtojoule. And uh, as a total, so this, uh, this uh, corresponds to the record low energy, uh, switching energy for uh, sub picosecond switch. So we have achieved this area. So this is our uh, target. And uh, as far as we know, this, this is the first demonstration of the femtojoule and femtosecond range uh, switching operations. So the, uh, this is a pretty, I think that this is a very good example of a nanomaterial nanophotonics platform. And actually, we we have been working, we are working on a several different platform for the nanomaterial nanophotonics. And uh, this is one example, but we think uh, this uh, convention of nanomaterial nanophotonics is very uh, good uh, uh, platform for making the very uh, energy efficient nanophotonic devices. And uh, uh, this is a summary of first part. And then actually we are working for the uh, optoelectric processor in MTT. And uh, uh, we are thinking of the, uh, this kind of uh, optoelectric uh, uh, compute, uh, com computation devices. So in these devices, uh, the com computation is uh, done by the uh, light propagations. 
So this is mostly uh, consisting of the uh, linear optic devices like um, MZI uh, circuit or something like that. But we still need the uh, nonlinear function repeatedly. So we think that the uh, or, uh, optical transistor or the graphene devices uh, may play an important role for the, this uh, nonlinear part. And also that this compu uh, computation uh, circuit uh, should be uh, connected to the uh, CMOS, CMOS processors. So that means that uh, this EO conversion and OE converters are very, very important. So the, this is our uh, future plan for making the devices. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, 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 second part. It is about the topological and non hermitian nanophotonics devices, uh, nanophotonics. And probably you might have known about the topological photonics, but I will be I begin with uh, some basics of the topological uh, physics. And actually, topological properties are determined by the certain topological invariant. And then the uh, very simple example is the uh, genius. It's a number of holes in like here. Uh, this cup doesn't uh, doesn't have a hole, and this hole and uh, donut has a one hole, and this glass has a two holes. And if we, there's some uh, property, it's determined by sim uh, simply determined by the number of holes, uh, such a property will be robust against continuous deformations. And the, uh, several physicists have found that the, such, a, uh, such a property can be found in the material, electronic, electronic uh, quantum wave function of the material itself. And actually, they found out that the Topology in the K space plays a key role for the, uh, the uh, solid state uh, uh, properties. And uh, in that case, in this case, this is a number of hole is called the churn number. Churn number is a topological invariant and determined, uh, defined in the K space. So the, uh, uh, very naively, we can say that uh, this corresponds to the shape of the elect, uh, wave function uh, or band structure in the case space that determines the topological properties. So the, uh, there are several such a property uh, have, been, uh, have been found in the solid state physics. The most important one, uh, most uh, famous one is the topological insulators. So for the topological insulator is insulator in the bulk but uh, there is a, a surface uh, conducting channel appear. And uh, this uh, surface or edge, uh, edge channel appear. And uh, uh, there is edge transport that is determined by the orientation spin. Uh, so the, if we determine the spin, if we, uh, sorry, if we fix a spin, the uh, tra transport orientation is determined. So there's uh, such an interesting uh, property as we have been found. And some years ago, the, uh, the uh, uh, Nobel laureate, uh, the uh, professor Han Holden, he uh, proposed to use a certain photonic crystal for making the similar properties. Uh, in, this, in, in his proposal, uh, this uh, photonic crystal is based on the magnet optic material. And if we apply the magnetic field, then uh, this uh, particular photonic crystal band uh, has a, a certain finite charm number. This charm number is the definition of this charm number is also similar. Uh, only difference is uh, here we used electric wave function in K space, but here we have to use a photonic wave function in the K space. And uh, he, uh, he uh, predicted that uh, in this particular, particular case, so this two band has a uh, different churn number. So that's maybe because uh, this photonic band gap uh, could be a, a topological photonic band gap. So as a result of that, there appears an edge mode inside this photonic band gap. And it, uh, there is a, a, the one way single, uh, one way uh, transport, uh, photon transport uh, can be expected. And uh, soon after the, his proposal, the MIT teams uh, have uh, demonstrated this experimentally. And later, the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, actually, this is the optical analog of solid state topological physics. So, the, for us, 
This is a natural extension of photonic crystal by using the concept of topological physics. That's why this is very uh, familiar. Uh, I'm not familiar, but it's a very, uh, we are uh, very interested in this field. And uh, uh, some years later, after the Holden proposal, some researcher in Japan, he proposed to use a direct, uh, direct photonic crystal for making photonic topological insulator. So in this case, uh, it has a C6 uh, symmetry. It is uh, something like photonic graphene, but uh, he introduced some, uh, uh, some specific modulation for in this case. So the, uh, uh, so this is a photonic graphene and it has a Dirac cone and it here. And uh, the, for this case, this, uh, these six, six uh, pillar are uh, 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 um, uh, becoming closer to each other. Uh, then uh, it has uh, some band gap here, but this band gap is trivial one. But if the, these uh, six holes are separating our, apart towards the outside, then, then the, uh, they are again appear, they appear the, again the uh, photonic band gap. But this band gap is non trivial, uh, it's a topological band gap. And uh, uh, as a result of that, in this particular case, there appears the uh, edge mode, and uh, uh, we can observe the uh, pseudo spin dependent one way transport. So this is some optical analog of photonic topological instruments. So there, there are uh, many, many research study activities in this area. And uh, our uh, research interest in topological photonics is, uh, is uh, shown here. So the, uh, as a first, so we think that uh, this, is, uh, uh, this area is extension, natural extension of photonic crystal. So this is one reason. But there's another reason why we are interested in this. So we think that uh, in the topological uh, photonics and also the non-harmonic photonics, as I explained later, uh, we can uh, use the new degree of freedom for manipulating the uh, optical circuit, optical devices. So, the, so in that sense, so we are very interested in the some tunability in the topological photonics. So in other words, we are very interested in uh, reconfigurable uh, topological photonics. So, the, uh, so for such a goal, we are uh, doing a research into the uh, three directions. The first one is such a tunable uh, topological, photonic, uh, photonic, uh, topological photonics by using the phase change material. That is first uh, first topic, and the second one is uh, we we are going to use some no Hermitian contrariety. No Hermitian means in optics it's simply it's just a gain and loss. So the, we want to uh, realize the reconfigurable uh, topological photonics uh, by playing with gain and loss. So so that is second topic, and the, the last one is. Uh, uh, this is something particular uh, topology in optics. Uh, as I said, the topological uh, photonics started from the uh, topological physics in solid state material, but uh, uh, there's some certain area that uh, uh, is specific to the uh, topological photonics. So this is, so this is one example. Uh, so the photonic crystal can have the vectorial uh, topologies. So we are very interested in this uh, vectorial topology. So, and we want to control uh, this vectorial topology. So this is the last topic. Okay, so the, let's start with this uh, first one, this is recon reconfigurable topological photonics. And uh, uh, this is the same structure that I, I, ex uh, I explained for the uh, dielectric topological insulator. So in, this, in that case, is, uh, if we want to realize this topological phase, we have to change the structures. So the, by changing the structure, we can, we can achieve the uh, topological uh, phase, uh, topological phase uh, chain tra uh, transitions. But what, what we want to do is uh, uh, we use the same structure, but, uh, uh, but adding this phase change material. And uh, as a result of the material phase, uh, material phase change, and we achieved the photonic uh, topological phase change. So that is our uh, preliminary, uh, primary goal. 
So who making do this? Uh, we found out that uh, this particular combination of photonic crystal with uh, phase change material uh, like this. And here we assume that the phase change material is GST. GST is a very famous phase change material. And it uh, changes uh, from the amorphous phase to crystal phase. And uh, there's a large uh, refractor index change uh, from this, uh, this uh, two phases. And uh, uh, so if we low, if we uh, if, uh, if we make a, a pattern of this GST film on the silicon photonic crystal like this, then the, uh, if the, this GST is in the crystal phase, this photonic crystal has a trivial uh, photonic crystal, uh, photonic band gap. However, the, if the GST is in amorphous phase, then the, this photonic band gap becomes uh, non-trivial. And uh, as a result of that, there appears edge mode. So first, uh, we, uh, uh, we confirm uh, this operation by the numerical simulation. And uh, recently, we confirmed it, this uh, property in an uh, experiment. And uh, for the experiment, we use angular resolved reflectance spectroscopy. And this is a very simple experiment. And uh, we, achieve, we measure the uh, reflectance with, uh, uh, after the Fourier conversion by using the, uh, this objective lens. And uh, this is some typical experiment for the uh, uh, photonic, uh, photonic um, topological insulator. And in this case, we change the structures. So this is a prefabricated uh, photonic uh, topological insulator. So for the trivial cases, the, the, this, uh, this uh, spectroscopy, we can measure, uh, we can uh, determine the photonic uh, band, uh, band structure like this. And this is a band structure, measured band structure, and there's a band gap. And uh, uh, so this is a band structure for the topological phase. And, uh, and as you can see, so in this case, is this bottom band is more bright, and for the for this band, this top band is more bright. So this means that there is a band band inversion between these two phases. So this is some proof that the phase there is a phase change between this and this. But anyway, this is a result for the prefabricated one. But our goal is uh, we want to do this for the uh, same structure uh, by using uh, the uh, GST loaded photonic crystals. So this is the SCM picture of our fa fabricated devices. So this, uh, this correspond to the GST uh, fabricated on the silicon photonic crystal. And for the, uh, if the, uh, so this is the experimental result. And this is a band, band structure measured for when the, this GST in the crystal phase. And this is a band structure for the uh, when the GST is amorphous phase. And uh, so I'm sorry, this is contrast is opposite to the previous slide, but in this case, this black region is more bright. So that this means that in this case, this bottom band is brighter, but in this case, it's a top band is brighter. So this experiment shows that there occurs band inversion as a result of the phase change of the GSTs. So the, this shows that the, we can achieve the photonic topological, ish, uh, topological phase transition by, uh, by using the uh, phase change material. Okay, so let's move on to the non hermitian uh, topological photonics. And uh, uh, so this is very uh, uh, become a popular subject in nanophotonics. And uh, uh, in, uh, actually, even for the non Hamiltonian system, if the Hamiltonian has a certain symmetry, like a PT, uh, PT symmetry, then the, we can, uh, the, this system can have a real uh, eigenvalue. So, so this particular uh, symmetry uh, can be realized very easily in photonics. For example, the, this, there's a two, two cavities coupled each other, so one cavity has a gain and one cavity has a loss. And gain and loss are uh, the time reverse, time inverse uh, symmetry. So if we reverse the time and if we reverse the, uh, the uh, space, then this has uh, uh, the same structures like this. So that this has uh, this uh, property and uh, uh, this shows that the, this particular system has a uh, 
uh, uh, purely uh, real eigenvalue in these conditions. So this imaginary part, imaginary eigenvalue, imaginary part of eigenvalue is zero, but uh, it there occurs a certain phase transition between the uh, uh, real eigenvalue uh, mode and the complex eigenvalue mode, separating by this exceptional point. And a lot of this, I mean, researchers have found various interesting phenomena around this exceptional point, EP, like uh, loss-induced lasing or anti-symmetric reflection or chiral. That's why the, this field becomes very popular. And for us, the, we, look, uh, we look at this system in another direction, well, because of the conventional optics, uh, normally we control the propagation, uh, light propagation or confinement by using the real part of the different index. And for the imaginary part, we control uh, the intensity. And for the, in the case of photonic crystal, we use the periodicity of uh, real part of the index. But uh, this previous, this, uh, this EP transition shows that uh, this eigenvalue can be controlled by the, this imaginary part. So what does this mean? This means that the, uh, this interesting field, we can control the uh, propagation or confinement. So this is uh, another word of the real part of the eigenvalue. This can, can be controlled by the imaginary part of the refractive index. So that is interesting. So the, uh, we are thinking, we are especially interested in the periodicity of the real and imaginary part of the refractive index. This is a, it is something like no harm mission photonic crystals. So the, we are thinking about this kind of system. Uh, this is a simple one-dimensional periodic system. And uh, this one the, uh, and the, uh, we are thinking of the, we can change the imaginary part of the refractive index uh, by the current injection like this. Then what we can uh, expect? The, uh, actually, we started from the most uh, simplest structures. In this case is uh, this uh, 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 resonator array is uh, uh, modulated. Uh, like gain and loss, gain, loss, gain, loss. So it's alternatively. And we found out that in this very simple system, the, this has a very exotic dispersion because it, 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 there occurs an exceptional point singularity uh, within the band dispersion. So the, because of that, the, for example, the light velocity uh, can be uh, super luminal uh, in the vicinity of an uh, exceptional point. So such exotic, exotic property can uh, appear for this simple uh, gain and loss uh, periodic system. And later we found out that if we uh, introduce that is four cavity unit, gain, loss, loss, gain, gain, loss, loss, gain, or something like that, then we can achieve, uh, we can uh, control the uh, photonic topology. That, that is, I want to tell you with this uh, slide. So here we control the, uh, uh, here we introduce the uh, four cavity unit, gain, uh, uh, this gain, loss, loss, gain, uh, or gain, uh, loss, gain, gain, loss, or something like that, four cavity unit. And we found that uh, uh, this, uh, if we change the gain and loss for this four cavity unit, there occurs uh, some special phase. Uh, actually, it's, uh, in this uh, phase, Two and phase three in this particular area, uh, there occurs a band gap in this uh, one dimensional chain. And uh, uh, in this uh, area, W, if the, this W equal one in this area, this band gap becomes uh, non trivial, uh, like this. Uh, this, uh, this W is a uh, topological invariant in no harm mission uh, system. Uh, namely, that it's a global very uh, phase, uh, very phase uh, uh, invariant. And uh, if this has a non-trivial value, uh, this, this band gap becomes uh, topological. And they occurs as a uh, edge mode. That is what we found. And uh, uh, this is very interesting because uh, uh, our uh, structure itself is homogeneous. This is just a simple array of cavity. And uh, we can modulate the imaginary part of refract index by simply by the current injection. So this means that uh, we can realize 
the edge mode in anywhere in this, uh, this one dimensional chain. So this uh, numerical simulation shows that uh, if we, uh, if, if we uh, control uh, this uh, current injection, we can uh, realize the, the uh, edge mode in here. So the, this Z, uh, this edge mode, well, uh, this is uh, uh, this mode can be created anywhere in that array. So this is another example of the uh, reconfigurable uh, photon uh, topological systems. Okay. So and, uh, and recently we we are doing some experimental uh, study for this one, and, but the. Uh, uh, this full array is very difficult to uh, study. So the, we simply uh, study the, this uh, one pair, uh, double coupled non cavity pairs. So structure is very simple. Uh, there's two cavity and coupled each other. And we, and we look for the exceptional point for this particular system, for the uh, starting point. And uh, we, uh, we survey the previous uh, research study for the observation of the exceptional point in the two cavity system. And uh, actually there are many, many papers, but we found out that uh, no one has observed the exact EP for the light emissions. So this is very interesting. For example, in this case, so they observed a very clear EP transition, but there is no data at the EP point. And the same as uh, same is true for the other uh, other other cases. And uh, we studied for the uh, we experimental studies for our cases, and this is our experimental result. And we observe the same thing. So the, there is something similar to the EP transitions. And so this should be EP, but there is no data because there is sudden uh, sudden jump in between this case. And we found out that uh, this is caused by the uh, lazing transitions. So if the, this system in, in the lazing uh, conditions, there's always some jump between the, this phase and this phase. So the uh, exact EP uh, cannot, well, uh, it's very difficult to be observed uh, for the uh, lazing conditions. So, the, so that's why the, we look for the non-lazing regime in a spontaneous emission regime. And actually we, we clearly observe EP in this case. So this is a spectrum and uh, uh, we compare, uh, we ex extract the, uh, this uh, uh, peak, peak position and uh, we observe the spectrum at exactly at the EP conditions. So these, these two peaks are coalesced at exactly these positions. And therefore, if, if uh, what happened if, if, we, uh, if we can observe the exact EP, actually the, we, we should be able to observe some uh, very interesting light emission enhancement that was predicted by the, uh, some theorist in MIT. He report, uh, they predicted that this, there could be some uh, light emission enhancement around the exact EP. And actually we observed this. And uh, this is the uh, light emission intensity uh, around the EP. And uh, normally, the, if we increase, uh, uh, if we decrease the current in this way, the, the, the loss induced lasing uh, is possible. And this is some typical uh, behavior for the, this uh, uh, EP system. But for the such a uh, loss induced lasing should be occur after the EP transition. However, what we have observed here is uh, in, uh, this uh, power uh, out of the intensity is increased even before the EP. So the, this, in, in, uh, this improvement, uh, this in, increase uh, light emission increase, uh, uh, light emission increase uh, is uh, different from the a conventional loss in, in loss induced uh, loss induced lasing or reverse pump pr properties, and uh, actually this is uh, confirmed uh, by looking at the, the spectrum. 
normally the spectrum of the light emission from the cavity or lasing state is a low uh, but in this particular situation at the exactly exact EP position, we observe the deviation from the low range. And uh, this experimental result is much better, much uh, 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 close, uh, closer to the double low range shown here. And actually, this double low range is uh, exactly what the uh, theoreticians uh, predicted. So we think that uh, this experimental result confirmed the theoretical predicted the, uh, this Erdos enhancement exactly. Okay, so the, uh, okay, my time is running up, but uh, I quickly uh, go, go through the, this last topic. It is about the vectorial property of the topological uh, photonics. And as, as I explained, the normal uh, conventional topological photonics is determined by the, this topological invariant that is determined by the, uh, uh, the, the photonic wave function. But in a photonic wave function uh, used here is a scalar function. It's the same as say, uh, similar to the uh, solid state physics. But we can define the another uh, topological invariant uh, using the uh, vectorial wave functions. Namely, the Stokes vector for the uh, photonic crystal mode. Then we can define another uh, topological uh, invariant. And actually, the, this, de this determines the uh, wireless uh, polarization similarities. So this is uh, the topic of this part. And uh, I'm going to show you the most famous uh, uh, topological singularity in, the, this, uh, in this area called the bound state in the continuum. And uh, uh, this, is a con uh, this is a bound structure for the uh, conventional two-dimensional photonic crystal. And as you can know that, uh, as you can see that the, this band, this first band is below the light line. So this is perfectly confined. This is bound mode. But uh, this second mode is, uh, uh, is varied in the uh, continuum uh, radiation mode. That's why the, this second mode is mostly the leaky mode, unbound mode. However, in the uh, photonic crystal community, uh, it has been known that the, this particular uh, gamma point, uh, the, there is no uh, radiation because there is this, uh, this mode, uh, radiation from this mode is uh, symmetrically uh, prohibited. So this is an example of the bound state in the continuum. Actually, such a state is predicted for a long time ago in the quantum mechanics. And uh, uh, this kind of uh, bound state inside the continuum spectrum is uh, possible. And uh, this simple example is a, uh, is a simple example of the uh, bound state continuum. It's a symmetrical protected. But this symmetrical protected is uh, more or less uh, trivial. However, uh, recently, the researchers have found that uh, there is another bound state in the continuum in the photonic crystals. Or in the particular case, so this some intermediate point in the case space uh, becomes uh, radiation, uh, radiation free. So this is uh, called the off gamma BICs. And uh, this is interesting uh, because the, this uh, bound state in the con this BIC is topologically protected. Uh, what does this mean? And this means that uh, if, we, if we calculate the topological invariant, I, uh, I defined before, the, this uh, C becomes integer at this BIC. And also if the C is half integer, uh, this point becomes a circularly polarized state. So the, uh, this uh, top, uh, polarizes, uh, polarizes sing uh, singular point is uh, explained by the, this topological invariant in the vectorial topology, like shown here. Right? And uh, uh, as I said, the, for the uh, at the gamma, uh, symmetry protected BIC has been known for years. For example, the uh, Professor Noda, uh, he is using uh, this particular point for making surface emitting laser by photon crystal. Uh, but the off gamma BIC is different uh, because it has a finite K, uh, K value. So this BIC is movable in K space. So it means that it, it can uh, propagate. The BIC. So it has a, 
very different property from the, uh, the dissymmetrical protected BIC. However, the previous off gamma BIC uh, have been uh, accidentally formed. So the, there is uh, no deterministic way to uh, realize such uh, off gamma BICs. Uh, accidental means that uh, it can appear for the certain uh, combination of the uh, geometrical uh, parameters like uh, lattice constant or uh, pillar size or something like that. It's, it's, it appears accidentally. But recently, you have found that the, the, we, we can realize the off gamma BIC in a, a completely deterministic way. And uh, uh, we start from the uh, symmetrically protected BICs. It's a uh, uh, trivial BIC. It's at a gamma point. But this gamma point, this, uh, this has a, a topological charge of minus two. So this is important. And here we introduce some uh, uniaxial deformation. I mean, the, the initial photonic crystal has a C6 symmetry, but uh, after adding a uniaxial deformation, it, it is a C2 uh, symmetry. Then uh, this uh, at gamma BIC is broken up into uh, two separate of gamma BIC. That is our finding. And uh, this shows the numerical conformation of such uh, our expectations. So if we expand into this direction, it's uh, uh, at the gamma BIC is separated into two uh, BICs. And as I said, so initially the at the gamma BIC has a, a charge of minus two, but after the separation, the each, uh, B, at each BIC has a uh, charge of minus one. So the total charge is conserved. This is an important point for the distopological properties. And for the other direction of the uh, uniform uh, uh, deformation, the BIC is formed into the perpendicular directions. And recently we confound this by uh, experimental, uh, uh, experimental measurement. And the, uh, this is the same uh, band structure measurement. And uh, you can see that there is a band, uh, there's one band here. And, uh, but uh, you, we cannot observe this point, gamma point, because uh, this point is a BIC. But uh, if we measure the, this expanded structures, this dark point moved to the, this, uh, this, area, this point. So this is a direct experimental conformation of the off gamma BIC. And for the other direction of deformation, we observe the off gamma BIC in these directions. Okay, so the, uh, probably I'm, I'm going to skip the last one. Uh, last, this last topic is uh, we apply the other uh, symmetry breaking. And uh, here is a, uh, we, uh, breaks uh, this C six symmetry to the C three symmetry, then we can uh, create the uh, circular polarized state, uh, creating from the uh, BIC, and we we observe a lot of complicated generation and annihilation of the uh, topological single point. But important point is in always the uh, the uh, there is certain conservation of the topological charge. And uh, more importantly, for explaining that this uh, full behavior, we need to introduce uh, two uh, uh, topological charge, uh, this mu plus and mu minus, uh, reflecting the vectorial properties. Normally, we use uh, just one uh, topological charge, but in this case, we have to introduce two different topological charge. Okay. So the, uh, this is a, a research member. Uh, they are contributing very much for the talk I talked, uh, the work I talked today. And uh, this is a summary of my talk. Uh, sorry for the, uh, the time, time up. But anyways, I'll stop here and thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much uh, for this uh, beautiful uh, talk. Of course, very impressive results, but also very inspiring to hear your your motivation behind the different research topics. So thank you very much for sharing it with us. So we now have time for, for questions. Uh, and for that, we will uh, stop the recording.